Salutations <laughs> and welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of the Duckworth Tequila System, Lewis Stern and Tabasco. I am the Professorus, and on this marvellous podcast today, we are 24 games into this 2024 IPL season, and it is absolutely cooking. It's the biggest cricket competition in the world, and this is the biggest cricket podcast mm. in Mauritius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So congrats yep. on that. It's a yeah. podcast that has all the biggest superstars on it. We got Brian. We had Brian Lara, Ravi Shastri, Glenn Maxwell, Rishabh Pant, and of course Ravi Chandra and Ashwin. But today, I think personally, we have topped the lot. Now, before we do get to our huge guest, let's begin with bringing in our regular panel of experts. Let me first introduce a man who is known as the Boo Bandit, Adam Gilchrist. Next. <laughs> A man who made a scintillating 150 against a bunch of kids in a Mumbai street just a couple of days ago, Michael Vaughan. And finally, a producer uh, who'll just have to spend, uh, well, I've just spent the week with him in Hong Kong attempting to slay the dragon, and I'm pretty surprised that he's here. Ollie Silverton. Ollie. <laughs> How are you, gents? You're all good, all preview? Hey, Prof, when you said 24, now up to number 24, I thought you meant season. For us, not not IPL fixture of which there's about seven hundred more IPL games to go. But uh, yes, yes, good to see everyone. Yes, hello everybody, um, Vaughny. I'll get to that. Yes, you want to sit very quickly. Can I, can I, um, yeah, hi everyone. It's great to have Binger on as well. Uh, what a ledge. Um, saw him just a, a few days ago by the pool in the uh, Mumbai uh, vicinity. Uh, just a few things to put right on your intro. Um, I didn't get one hundred and fifty against the kids. I got out third ball. They were far too good. So I'll put that on right. Um, it isn't the biggest tournament in the world because obviously there's the European Cricket League that's bigger than the IPL and, oh, obviously, the, and, and obviously the 100 tournament here in the UK. So it's the third biggest tournament in the world. So I just thought I'd get you right on your intro. That's very kind of you, Vaughny. Um, hey, let's bring in our true superstar guest today. Finally, look, if you love Express Pace, beautiful blonde locks and a man who many consider to be the songbird of our generation. <laughs> and today's episode is about to become your favourite. Please welcome a man who is the fastest to 350 wickets in one day internationals. It's being our Brett Lee. Oh, yeah. Thank well, you, here. gentlemen. Howdy, howdy. How are we? Yeah, excellent. Very good. Good to see you. Hey, Bingo, great to, great to see you. Great to catch up. Um, Vaughny, uh, you mentioned the other leagues around the world. The IPL might even be fourth in line. Oh, yeah. Because... Bingo, tell us about World Champions of Legends. There's another cricket league that sprung out of nowhere, which I saw you spruiking on your socials yesterday <laughs> or this morning. What in the world's going on there? I did, mate. So it's uh, I've been told, I actually thought it was over 40s, but I've been told it's aged between 32 and 49. So I'm a bit concerned <laughs> that. You might have guys running in bowling some express pace uh, at the age of tender age of 32, 33. It's all played at Edge Baston, where we've uh, had the pleasure uh -huh. to play and very, very enjoyable. It's a great ground, not great for us in 2005, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're playing about six matches. It's Australia, uh, England, India, Pakistan. South Africa and West Indies. So it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm getting the chance to play against guys like Kevin Peterson, Ian Bell again. Vaughn, I didn't see your name on there, mate. Yeah, you're well, surprised, surprised, well, surprised, surprisingly, uh, being, I mean, my phone's always on. <laughs> <laughs> you punished me enough in 2005, mate, so I was content with that. No, it's great, great to see everyone, boys. Great to be on. Yeah. How's India going, Binger? You having the time of your life there, mate? Yeah, loving it. I actually um, notched up a bit of a milestone this year. So when I arrived here, what, the 20th of March, uh, it was my 30th year of uh, being over in this beautiful country. So 160-odd times to India, about five passports I've been through over the years. Mm. But it's just phenomenal. It's just incredible. And it's, you know, the, the people, the culture, the hospitality that you get, it's, uh, it's, it's the best in the world. Of course, it's over-consuming sometimes and it – um, it's organised chaos, but it's 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 a lot of fun. 130th million US dollar too, so that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a massive glass house here, Gilly. Oh, massive man, glass I've, house. I've already got my toast ready. So uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry, Vaughny, I cut you off there. Yeah, I was, I was just saying, being over-consuming was the word you used. I mean, how many selfies, on oh, pro-rata for the 30 years, how many selfies per day do you reckon you're on? 
Well, I averaged, uh, I did a bit of a take. I thought, you know, it's almost like sometimes when you go to the bar and someone said, oh, I had X amount of drinks last night, you need someone to count them, right? <laughs> so I, I sort of went in 2020, um, just before COVID hit, I was averaging, I, I sort of averaged out 300 selfies a day times 60 days. I did 18,000 selfies for the trip for one IPL. <laughs> <laughs> that, really? that's where that's where i based it on so oh my god yeah uh, it's, it's full on but i i've always had the the theory that I, i'm content i'm happy to do it it's the day where they don't ask for it is the day with that you know that you're too old you yeah. pass your best Gilly, Gilly, you have Vaughny on your little trip well, i had a few when i was selling this to bingo by the pool <laughs> <laughs> How was it down there just quietly? <laughs> oh, it's a hot one. And Scotty Styrus, he's looking well. Scotty Styrus, the Kiwi, he's there. He's the, Binger and Scotty, they did a full stint from day yeah. one, right? So the, the final May the 26th, yep. Binger. They did a the yeah. full stint on the uh, the Geo Cinema. The, what do you call it this year? Is it the dugout or the hangout? No, we are the insiders. The so insiders, we, that's we it. We have an inside sort of feel as to what's happening. And, yeah, it's it's every night. We roll it out again, um, and it, it's it's great. We've got some amazing guys to work with. Yeah. Gilly, was touring with Binger like what it felt like for the rest of the Wiggles touring with Emma Wiggle, the yellow Wiggle? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon... Uh... I didn't have orange hair. Only my first game I did. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a game at Lords where you're getting a, a nice oh, orange yeah. shoe. Off the uh, N Power sign that was M&M. coming up, um, uh, it was always exciting, no doubt about that, Prof. It was uh, it brought different uh, demographic to the game. A different demographic seemed to be following the team around, uh, different interests, um, to the point where that same demographic seemed to go into the the post match festivities. Particularly when Binger was standing on stage with his guitar in his oh, illustrious yes. band Six and Out. I mean, those were the. <laughs> I remember playing a one-day international alongside Binger and his brother Brett. Uh, sorry, Shane and um, and what Binger? We I reckon it was against. <laughs> Yeah, Vaughn's just playing that on his phone That's for those some... of you listening. <laughs> okay, there from you, Vaughn. Yeah. <laughs> no, no warning. That's vision, that's vision from the comeback tour this summer just gone in Australia. But being remember, we played Pakistan, I think it might have been, or India at the SCG. We yep. win the game, go in the change rooms, couple of beers, showered, and we walk up the road to a pub in Paddington to watch you blokes then rock on stage and perform a full gig uh, later Video on. Video shays. Kitty O'Shea's it was, and it was Stuart McGill's first one day for Australia. Yes. And that was when Richard Chiqui, who um, is the first uh, Chinese heritage background to play for New South Wales, he's our lead singer, um, <laughs> self-titled. He, he called himself the Asian Mick Jagger. <laughs> and we all got inside the venue, and and, che- and it was a massive lineup. And Cheeks went to walk in, he had the towel around like Doc Nielsen out of the Angels. <laughs> And he's, he's swanning through the front of the line and the bouncer goes, sorry, mate, can't come in. And Cheeks goes, I'm the I'm the lead singer. And the bouncer goes, mate, this is the cricket band, back of the line, champ. <laughs> he couldn't get in. Our, our lead singer could not get in, so we had to go out and get him in and he's blowing up. <laughs> How did the comeback tour go, Binger? I saw that you guys were on it. Was it the Bridge Hotel and it was a big sellout? Yeah. Yeah, mate, we've done four gigs in the last probably oh, close to six or seven weeks now. So we did uh, Melbourne, did Sydney, Adelaide, where we had the entire Australian cricket team come down, which was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, that infamous night with with Maxi, which will pass over oh. nicely. <laughs> and and then the Bridge the Bridge Hotel as well, which is an iconic venue, you know, for someone like us that get the chance to play now, every now and then, to play the venue that's that houses the, the best of the best, you know, the Screaming Jets are, I think, there last week and the Angels and all the Australian rock gods are all playing there and we got the chance to play there with six and out. Uh, lads, did I recount earlier in, I don't know, season one or two or somewhere in the first 15 seasons of Club Prairie Fire about when Binger's CDs were stolen? I think yeah. I, yes. <laughs> yes, who told that story? I think I had mentioned it before on yes. CPF. So, oh, 
bingo, here's the chance you write a reply. I, I think I recounted the story that your car got broken into and you, your whole catalogue of CDs when we used to carry them yep. around in those big folders got stolen. All of them were taken, which you had an impressive array of music, a huge back catalogue. Um, but the only things that were left in the car were the six and out CDs. Is, is that, harsh, is that harsh but fair, that? harsh but fair. <laughs> very, very true, Gilly. And you articulated beautifully on Fox during the summer. Um, essentially, I had a catalogue of about 400 CDs, anywhere from Backstreet Boys to Tchaikovsky to uh, Elvis Presley and everything in between. Um, so they flogged all my CDs. They took my ashtray money. It was about 20 bucks in the ashtray I had back then. <laughs> and I had 10 six and out CDs, which had never been open, ready to go. They're all promo CDs. They took everything, but they left the 10, 6 and out CDs on the front, um, you know, chair. And I'm like, just take one. Just take one. Have a listen. It's okay. Indulge me. So I was shattered. You could, they could have stolen the car for what I would have cared. But, yeah, just, just listen to one. Hey, bingo, the 6, six and out is one of the greatest Australian comebacks. So where is it heading? Is it, is it going bigger and better, big arenas? Yeah, look, there's talk of the UK. Um, we had an opportunity to get over to India um, through the IPL. It's just when there's um, seven of us in the band now, because my younger brother, Grant, who's actually got all the musical genes in the family, he's now on keys. He's been there since the start, but he's keys and backing vocals. So to fly seven of us, seven of us overseas somewhere, um, you, you know, you've got to put a pretty hefty... Uh, price tag if you want to make any money but for us it's not about making a cent we'd love playing i'd play for free i love it i love being in the band uh so we want to keep doing more stuff but we we've clocked up about 250 shows around australia uh since 1997 or 98 i think it is but mate we love it we love music it's 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 great fun now being a, obviously a lot of Aussies over in India at the moment involved in the IPL mm. Billy's about to set sail i'm just wondering whether you guys all hang out together um there's two parts to this question, if you do. And secondly, how's Ricky going? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen Ricky, actually. Um, you know, you think about the Delhi Capitals, what are they, minus 1.370 on their net run rates, um, <laughs> you know, sitting on sitting on two points. So he's not having the, the rub of the green at the moment in terms of how his team's going. He, his family was staying here at the pool. I actually saw his family, but I didn't see Ricky. Um, I think he's snowed under with work and you now there's a bit of pressure from his end, I would have thought. But, uh, yeah, he, he's he's struggling at the moment with his team. And, you know, as you guys know, some you know, as captain, as coach sometimes, it's it's not necessarily up to what you do. It's it's up to us, the players as well. So everyone's got to lift their weight. Uh, but the first part of the question, I have seen a few of the Aussie boys. I ran into Cam Green and Richo uh, a couple of days ago, we were stopping. We do our little coffee stop on the way just around the hotel we were staying and saw the boys and had a quick chat. But, yeah, you know, teams sort of come in and go at, in this hotel and we say day, but everyone's so busy. And, you know, I'm, I'm working every single night. So come 4 p.m. Indian Standard Time, I'm off to work and get back about 1 a.m. Yeah, all right. What about the Englishman, Borny? Were you all hanging out? Um, who have I seen? No, I haven't really seen. I've seen a few of the Aussies. I'll tell you who my new favourite is, Jake Fraser McGurk. I like him. Legend, mate. <laughs> yep. He's, the rooster. I, I tell you, you're going to have some fun, fun with him over the years. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but he might be on a similar app to Ollie. Oh, oh. I, don't know if you're, I don't know if you're still on that app, Ollie, because you're obviously uh, um, very much in love these days. Uh, I was going to ask you that, Ollie. How, how did your girlfriend take you going to Hong Kong for the Hong Kong? Is it Hong Kong Sevens? Yeah. Mm. Um, but thanks for us. Yeah. So a bit of background, Brett. Um, I was pretty sought after in Bondi, um, but I've decided to really <laughs> settle down um, with um, with Maddie, um, which is which is good. Um, to be Hong Kong Sevens, she was all right because she, as I mentioned, in Sri Lanka. So you know we, we're going to miss anyway. So she's just been, um, you know, doing that. And and on that, that Sri Lanka is a great point. Because there was a bit of socials coming in on Sri Lanka and two things that were fantastic I had to share because the fans wanted a bit more love from the Sri Lankan results that we mentioned last week. So the first one, Daniel Alexander, 
on the social is, is one of your favourites, Vaughn, who basically yeah. just trolls Indian mm, fans yeah, more, like than, it, yeah. more than Vaughn. <laughs> um, with their win last week, Sri Lanka had the highest win rate of test matches for a minimum 100 tests. They overtook Pakistan um, with 32.59%. India in third place. Uh, which was a very good stat um, mm. coming in. So they are, and Bangladesh, um, sadly, at 13%. Um, first bit of Sri Lanka. And the other one, big, big fan, Kamara uh, Malikatran of the show, just sent in 14-year-old Sri Lankan, Chamodi Praboda. I don't know if she got a Pfeiffer against England in the under-19 tri-series at 14 years old. Oh, wow. I wanted to give her wow. a shout out. It was an absolute... Star. So I think Maddie's just been watching those games and she's very happy and we're very happy. Thanks for asking, Vaughny. Yeah. Mm. And the app was is it is it a similar app you think he's on, Jake Fraser? I, I don't know if he would have got approved to Raya because they normally just keep the English um on there, but perhaps if he's lucky, um yeah, he may have got No, I actually felt I, I think I, I know a little <laughs> bit of insight. He, he he's been rejected from Raya at the minute. Yeah. Oh, oh I've been a good word. I've, yeah, at the at the minute, but he'll get on there in, in time. He's had his hair cut by Davy Warner. Davy Warner's there and jumped into a Davey by the pool. He's got his daughters there. I know his, uh, his wife's in the jungle. Kathy's <laughs> is he's yeah. back there in the jungle. Yeah. And his three kids, the Warner sisters, they were running a mock, so it was good to see. Big Mitch saw Big Mitchy Marsh. He's picked oh, yeah. up a niggle. Yeah, Big Mitch was on fine form. He was uh, loving every single minute of the IPL. No bet. <laughs> no bet. Binger, you did your six seasons of playing in the IPL. I guess... How much has it changed over the years? As I, we've chatted on this show about how it's become this the yeah. largest thing in life. Um, have you you've been there obviously every year? Sorry, it goes baseball <laughs> and then ECL hundred, yeah. and then obviously IPL. It's now that it's become the fourth biggest biggest con- cricket contest in the world. How have you seen it change since you played? Oh look, it, it's it's changed a lot, and I I think back to. Uh, 2008, I, I had the pleasure to play three years for Kings Eleven back then, now known as the, the Punjab Kings. And, and then I did a couple of years at KKR and lucky enough to, to win a title, which was the best feeling in the world. But look, bowling, bowling four overs, you know, a lot of people don't realise the, the power and, and energy that goes into bowling four overs. It's, it's, I always say a T20 match from a bowling and a physical point of view is like playing in a, a 50 over match. So that was tough, hot conditions. But what really hurt me and what really made the trip go and, and seem like a long, long time was the after parties. I, I sort of found that really hard to get over. Um, it was compulsory every night. You had to go to these after parties. So I wasn't tired from the game. I was buggered from the after parties and that was relentless. So that has changed. <laughs> I must say that has changed. But no, nah, look, it was that, that was the fun. Yeah, the the fun times as a, as, a, as a youngster playing cricket, you're playing in, um, you know, with different cultures and, and just to see how guys prepare differently. I've played with Kuma Singakara to Jack Callis, so who I've always said, in my opinion, is the best cricketer ever to play the game uh, in all three facets because batting, bowling, fielding. Um, but, yeah, mate, it was, it was just incredible. But it's changed. It's, it's now there's... You know, with all these different apps that are out and, and camera phones and stuff, guys haven't really got their privacy anymore, which is sad because they can't enjoy themselves as well. Yeah, I mean, we've just had Michael Vaughan announce to the world that Jake Fraser McGurk's on trying to get onto Raya, so nothing <laughs> sacred at the moment these days, is it? But um, And the other thing about Jack Callis you mentioned, Ben Duckett still doesn't think Jack Callis would get into this era of England career. But we'll get onto that in just a moment. Being a, of all the seasons in the IPL, three uh, three seasons with two clubs, respectively. Um, what was the best TV commercial you did, mate? I did one for for um, I think it's for Kit Kat, and they had the Hannah. So you know, you know when they go to, and and the girls they they go to the um, you know to a wedding, and they have all the Hannah and they they draw yep. in the hand. Yeah. <clears throat> so they spent about two hours drawing the the Hannah on my hand and and had everything ready. And then I had to say a, a phrase in Hindi, which I can't remember what it was. Yeah. And I went da, 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 like that and showed my hand. And they went, oh. And all my teammates were there and they had to react. And I'm just looking at it going, this is so cringy, so cringy. <laughs> so, yeah, they threw a million Kit Kats at us, but I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> Ollie, do you that was you definitely find... the most cringeworthy one I did. Ollie, do you think you can find the pearls? That was interesting. Oh, on the beach, Yeah. 
yeah. Oh, there's <laughs> like the thing in in India. What what we define as tacky, um, you know, stuff that you don't really want to see on Australian television it works over here, and it's fine. Yeah. So you, you've got to sometimes separate the two and just embrace it. And you know, I remember you getting your your, your first wicket, Gilly, after your first ball, and doing Gangnam <laughs> style dancing around. So you know, yeah. we've we've yeah. done what we had to do. Absolutely. Don't worry. I'm no, uh, I'm no stranger to uh, what I would say embarrassing uh, TV commercials <laughs> on YouTube when it came to the IPL or even for Australia. Vaughn, I reckon I remember seeing you in a shower. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me and Freddie. Yeah. I think I was a King, David Gower. King, yeah, Kingfish, Kingfisher advert. Yeah, singing Ooh La 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 Leo. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> you right. You know, you'd have heard that. Well, yeah, anything goes in India. I've got to bring something up here that, you know, our good friend Ravi Shastri, I don't yeah. know if you've seen his latest uh, tweet or X, should we call it, but if I can just put you to the camera there and just have a look at Ravi's picture of himself in a bathrobe wow. with his hands behind his head. Oh. And, he, and it says, I am hotty. I am naughty. I am 60. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a pitch up, doesn't it? Well, I'm not too sure. Vaughny, you're um you're fifty in a few months. Can we expect something similar? Yeah, I'll go, yeah, I'll, I'll go naked. Oh, just with the oh, with the nice duck, with the yeah, ducky bucket yeah, hat. Yeah, the ducky bucket. Yeah, I must admit, uh, uh, being a, I hope you don't think I wear these kind of hats all the time. But this is um Duckett's buckets hats. Mm. So the legendary like England it. opener Ben Duckett. I'm, I'm, I'm actually has, has he taken credit for you bowling 155 miles an hour yet, or is is that yet to come? Not yet, haven't seen it, but I'm waiting for it. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Just give him a bit of time. He'll take credit for your career. But these are uh, these uh, Duckett's buckets. I've got one in uh, white as well. Uh, I've got one in blue. Uh, so uh, I'll get you all some. I'm sure you'll be uh, delighted to wear some Duckett's buckets Beautiful. over in Australia. Spe- speaking of Beautiful. him, we mentioned there with um, Jacques Callis, he wouldn't get in the side. He actually is right. Jacques Callis's strike rate in tests is lower than Vaughney's, 45.97. <laughs> so he really would struggle in that England side right now. And fair enough. Now, Gilly, you mentioned it earlier. We're obviously referencing uh, what Duckett said recently about uh, how it's he wouldn't be in any, he wouldn't have got the chance unless he was in this team. Is that right? Have I oh, yeah, paraphrased I, that correctly? Paraphrasing a little bit, I just saw a little snippet on socials. I think, Vaughn, you might have brought it to our attention. Mm. It was the, the, the what used to be known as the Cricketer Magazine, their social media site. But just the quotes from him about that, well, he's in. this is the best era of Test cricket for England. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I assume he means forever um, <laughs> because your mob, your mob didn't achieve anything, Vaughn. Um, and he, da- he snuck a little drive-by in it uh, on England's highest ever Test run scorer, Alastair Cook, sir, don't, if you don't mind. Uh, he snuck a little drive-by on him and, and Straussy. Um, just said, you know, geez, the way we play and the way I play, no one's ever played this way. I mean... What did he say? Something like, I used to watch those guys. And he sort of almost chuckled and went, <laughs> you, know, you know, don't want to put words in his mouth, but I, I took that as that he wasn't overly impressed by the way that they played their cricket. Um, but I just did a bit of, I did a little bit of homework. So Ben Duckett, 20 tests, 1464 runs. He averages 40, which is, as an opener, highly respectable in, in any era, 300s. Um, but just that, the claim of being the best era of England cricket. I, so of those 20 test matches, Bangladesh, it was a one-all drawn series. Good side. Pakistan, Pakistan they won 3-0, England did, in Pakistan. Well done. That's something that not many teams have achieved in the last 30 years because basically no one's been there in the last 30 <laughs> years. Um, New Zealand, in New Zealand, it was a one-all draw. Ireland, England did. Shh. Flex their muscles against the might of the Ireland red, Lords. Yeah, red, they won by red. one, one nil. Australia, of course, a moral thumping of Australia at two all. Um, India, and this is where I'll bring in Ollie Robinson. Um, on another series, in another time, in another planet, that could have been three two to England. That's that's the justification from Ollie. Um, he claimed a three two series win. So, but of course, the stats and history will say one four lost. So in seven series, they've won two. Uh, in those 20 test matches, they've won nine, lost nine, and drawn two. So that is, without doubt, that is 
justification best of being the best era, era ever in England cricket, no yeah. doubt. Well, great, great yeah. homework doing my job there, Gilly. With hearing that, you're probably shaking, but we haven't had many fast bowlers on. Um, Brett, how would you go about bowling to this side? Would you? I saw you a little looking a little bit worried there. Um, would you take on Basil or um, or just you know just fake an injury and just sit on the sideline? <laughs> I would. I would love them if 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 they come out swinging. I mean that that's exciting cricket. But look, it's. On a on a serious note, and I know this is all about fun, but on a serious note, it, it's really hard to compare areas. It's almost impossible. But I, I look back with, I guess, glazed eyes and think the 2005 series has to be one of my favourites. And even though that we lost in terms of Australia, if you can't get any more competitive cricket, guys at the top of their game and, and the sort of calibre of players that were playing from both sides, I mean, that has to be, in my opinion, you know, the best best teams ever in, in, in that Ashes series, so but it's 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 tough. But the whole basketball thing, you know, w- would have been super exciting to play in, definitely. Do you, do you, Binger, do you do you agree with uh, um, Jim Maxwell where he describes basketball as bas bollocks? <laughs> well, everyone, everyone's going to take on it, haven't they? I haven't heard that expression uh, before, Vaughny. But uh, look, whether or not it's going to stay a long, long time, stats stats will tell. And what did you say, nine and nine, Gilly, and a couple of draws there. So, you know, if, if this whole basketball thing's going to stay, I want it more of a, um, you know, a 14, 14 or 14 slash six split. Or as, you know, the great Andrew Simons would have said, a 15, six split type of thing. That, that'd be, you know, a lot better. <laughs> You um question. You were just talking about your favourite memory there, oh oh five, um, and then yeah, that's linked to also, um, Basball and beating up English. And one of my favourite memories, yours, is bouncing out Piers Morgan, um, who. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, what are your memories? He's still dining out on that. Vaughn <laughs> wants to get him on the show, um, but I'd like to hear your side first, so we can hear um hear a bit more in the enjoyment levels. <laughs> you know that's now a public well, holiday. Vaughn, I'll, 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 I'll make a promise. If you if you get Piers Morgan on, I'm happy to come back on and, and hop into him again. Hey, Bingo, I, I was uh, working for Channel 9 when you were bowling to Piers. I was uh, net side with uh, the King Warney. Uh, Mark Nicholas, I think, was hosting. And I have to say, you were, <laughs> you were charging, in it? I was, <laughs> and I wasn't. Uh, behind the line. Actually, I was way over the front line, to be honest. And <laughs> I, I was steaming in. To his credit, though, Piers Morgan said to me just before he we went live, he goes, if you go t- and, and take it easy on me, this is going to look like it's rigged. You have to go flat out. I said, with absolute pleasure, sir. <laughs> and we had to sign a waiver. Literally, Chell and I made a sign a waiver in case something untoward happened. Um, would I have faced that? Absolutely not. There was about 7,000 people watching that came from the ground, including, remember, Vaughn, they had both members uh, in terms of the whole team come up, you know, especially the bowls that Pierce Morgan was slaying off in the press, had come up to watch and get maimed. And he still <laughs> dines out on to this day. It went, it made news in Iceland, which I couldn't believe. I don't even know they watched it in Iceland. Mm-hmm. And I, he took me out for breakfast a couple of years later in England and he tweeted, Back then, he said, having having breakfast with my mate Binger because there's no ribs on the menu. I broke two of his ribs that day. <laughs> Did you see recently when Piers basically took on the whole of Australia over the stay in your crease, Johnny, incident, how many mm. Aussies were asking for you to go and bowl at him again? <laughs> well, it only happened two days ago. I met an, an Englishman here at the, um, the hotel I'm staying at in Mumbai. And I generally get two things when I meet a POM. They always say, uh, how's the 05 Ashes series? So it's either a sledge or, mate, I love how you um, nailed Pierce Morgan. So, And I still get it today, every single time. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Oh, good. They just they forget all the hundreds of wickets you, you took for Australia. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's all right. So it's all part of it. Now, we do have to chat. We are this currently. We've, um, this is season 17 of the podcast. I'm about to get into the IPL here, so, Gilly. So, did you have one? Prof, yep. Yeah, Prof, I've got yeah. one last thing that just it, it's been nagging me since it first came up earlier in this chat. And Binger just mentioned it, 2005 at uh, Edgbaston. Vaughn changing his lid there. He's gone into test match Second mode. new ball. Test mm. match. He's, got the, he's got the white test match hat on as I talk about 2005. <laughs> yeah. Binger, can right. you believe 
how fucking arsy it was of Vorney to still have a fielder out at deep point when you slap that one out there to the boundary. That was our victorious moment. That's going to be a 2-0 Mate, dominant performance. It was, a, it was a fluke that he had a guy at deep point, honestly. Totally. I, I think he forgot to bring the guy up. But you know what? Half a metre, <laughs> half a metre either side, and that was four. And I actually, I remember looking at the, um, the guys in the dugout or in the change room. They all jumped up, thought that we won yeah. the game. And so, so I made a point, a, a very valid point, just a couple of days ago over here in India. They said, you should have taken a single. And I went, I should never thought about that. But I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't play. You know, I was back in Casper. Uh, and even I've, though that, even though that if, if, if you look at the, you know, the game of cricket and how it's evolved, his hand was off the bat. It would have gone upstairs. It would have been overturned. No. Nah. I, I saw it live. Billy Bowden made the right call at that particular time. And, you know, you move on. But we would not be sitting here talking if I slapped that either way for four. I think we would have probably gone on to win that series because the confidence would have kicked in, um, you know. But here we are talking about a wonderful game. But, yeah, that – and I remember Freddie, I was black and blue from where he pinned me throughout mm. that, that whole series and certainly that last day. And he came in having a cold beer and he poked me in the ribs like this. I'm like, going, oh, you bastard. <laughs> what, what did, <laughs> what did Freddie – the famous picture of Freddie bending down and – Shaking your hand at the end. What did he actually say? I can't remember. It, it, it's something on the lines of, um, mate, you almost beat us. You almost got over the line. It probably would have been like you asked it or shit. You, know, you nearly, almost nearly beat us. I'll see inside for a cold beer. Something like that. Hmm. But it just happened so quickly. But, you know, and, and, and the other thing too, Gilly, that, that moment's been captured now in, in, in time. You know, that's, that's the spirit of cricket war, which I'm proud about. And, Proud to be a part of that, you know, that series. Mm. And, you know, we we played so hard against each other, even the point mm. where guys weren't even chatting, you know, on the field. They weren't chatting off the field. But as soon as it, as soon as the series had finished, everyone's back to being mates again. Yeah, and, and it's great yeah. that the, the present England team have taken great credit for that 05 series. It's, uh, mm. It was nice of them recently to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They always do. That's a, yeah. Bonnie, were you, were you... I'm reflecting on that. Decision to take that single all of a sudden. I'd never thought of it. Yeah, I know. Actually... <laughs> you know what I was reflecting on this morning, gents, when I, when I knew I was coming on? I was reflecting on I reckon it was your first episode that you did, and I was a bit disappointed I wasn't invited on because you were speaking about the size of someone's backside. And I remember you were talking, uh, Vaughny, about, you know, guys that should have a tape measure around their coit and see what... Yeah. You now, I, I thought I might have got a Guernsey there, Gilly. I know you mentioned um, Casper Witz, but yeah. I thought I might have had him covered. But oh, I just that's a progression there for good, a second. Yeah, a couple of good hind quarters there, no doubt about it. But, uh, <laughs> we had the theory, didn't we? The bigger the rump, the faster the bowler? Was that the yeah, theory? Yeah, he needed a big ass. Yeah. have a big ass. Yeah. Freddie Truman, big, big backside. Mm. Oh, it's mm. great to find the listener from season one, though. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. so You're welcome. <laughs> and Binger, don't sell, don't sell Iceland short on their cricket knowledge. We were number one there too, so don't worry about that. Do but uh, anyway, that's good to clarify all that. Oh five, that's old news now. Sorry, Prof. We're moving Beautiful. into. The- I, just, well, I just thought we should touch on the IPL. Currently, there is um, obviously there was as we go. This goes to line. There will have been a game that's been played. Um, yeah. The the uh, Royals are taking on the Titans. So yep, yep. I'm going to say congrats to the Royals. Well done. Yep. Oh, okay. We have to right. guess that. Is everybody agreeing with that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That yep. one's the Chinnaswami, is it? Uh, I haven't got that here. Sorry, folks. Binger, mm. do you know? One, it's 1v7, one, 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 one it is, in terms of Redstone Royals right out in front. So, yeah, I mean, now that that's in, um, in Jaipur. The Pink City. Oh, sorry, Rajasthan Royals. I thought you said uh, Royal Challengers. Yeah, right. Okay, nah, nah, yeah. Rajasthan yep. win. Oh. Yeah. Now, the result that I wanted to quickly talk about was the Sunrisers Hyderabad taking on, uh, they beat the Punjab Kings 11, is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and yeah, uh, Sunrisers won by two runs, but there's something I read and saw which was wonderful, which is this, Pat Cummins bowled Johnny Bairstow for a duck and took a brilliant mm. catch to dismiss Englishman Sam Curran later in the run chase. Yep. So I, I guess even if he'd lost, he still would have been, been feeling pretty good post-match. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was the first time. I've been calling for it the whole IPL and we're, um, what do we say, we're about nearly 20 games in or what, whatever it might be. But 
I, I've I've said that the bowlers aren't bowling in their right spots. You know, they haven't been, you know, they the quickest bowlers aren't taking the brand new ball. So last night here, um, Mumbai time, Pat Cummins took the initiative as as skipper, yeah. took the brand new ball, had that first opportunity and and knocked over Bairstow and Bairstow doesn't like the ball coming back in, you know, the angle back in, he's his bat shape's a little bit different. He's had a few issues with that, but Camo knocked him over top of off. Yep. Gets, uh, gets bowled other... a fair bit, does Johnny, doesn't he? he does. Yeah, he doesn't protect his, his stumps or crease. He, he gets stumps as well now and again. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, the big thing of that game, um, the, the big thing of that game, Prof, I noticed was that meant Gillies, we all picked a team, Brett, before the yes. um, tournament started. Gillies, Sunrisers, Hyderabad, jumped into fifth over my yeah. Kings Eleven Punjab. And if we look a little lower, we can find they are indeed. We can find Vaughan's Mumbai Indians and then in eighth and then in ninth is yeah. um <laughs> let me Hustle tell Green. you, I'm gonna say I don't know if Bingo agree. The Mumbai Indians, this is what they do. They start mm. slow and now Super Mario Shepherd's in. Super mm, Mario's yes. there with He's 32 good. off the last uh, last over off uh, Norkia. Uh the president Nabi from Afghanistan, he's now yep. in. I'm telling you, they're coming through. Watch out for the Indians. Well, do you know who I've picked to win? Who? Kelly. Kelly Kelly sitting in ninth position. RCB, I thought, if the girls can do it, the guys can definitely back it up. Yeah, mm, I, yeah. I, I picked them as well. Uh, that's a worry, Brad, because <laughs> Prof did pick them, but he also had Moen Ali as top wicket taker. Whoa, so whoa, that's whoa. the company hey, you're in. That's wait, the company hey, you're let's, in. Let's talk about did, Moen did, Ali. But he did get a couple of wickets, bro. He did. And for this team that you bloke said he would never get a run in, he got, two, he got the best figures. He, he came two? off the bench, got two for I think. Yeah, and then got dropped again for the next game. But can we just go through our? Can we just go through our predictions just again, just to okay. just see where we all sit? I've got them here. Um, let's have a quick little. So Gil, oh, this is my favourite. Gilly went Mitchell Stark for leading wicket taker. <laughs> We don't need to dig into that too. Uh, can I just say, can I just say at the moment, has, uh, what's he got? <laughs> One for 154. <laughs> I think well, he's taken early days, days. Early days. Yeah. Early days. Two, um, two, two rounds. Two, two, two parts. Two, and then, Gil, yeah. Gilly, you just wait until the, the, the grass starts to grow on the wickets in India. You'll be fine then. He'll be right. He'll be good. He'll yeah. come good at the back end. Yeah. <laughs> and then Gilly went Jaswal as oh, leading runs. 20 runs. He's not setting the mm. world on fire. Um, no. Vaughn went Yadav for most. He's not weeks. played. He yes. no. <laughs> which he's which Yadav? He played the first. Yeah, could be. Could be. Could be. I, had, I had a coffee with him the other morning. He's out for a while, so I'm like, oh, well, he's gone. Um, he we should have went Mayank about... Yadav, but he's injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to talk about who he picked for leading run scorer. It's not important. Well, um, are, you, is, are you claiming Virat or was it Rowett? You mentioned both of them. I'll no, go no, back no, and no, 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 no. I said Vera. I did say Vera. I said Rohit's strike rate might be the highest, but I don't think it's anywhere close because right. I would say someone like Abhishek Sharba uh, is, is probably at the top of that list. He gives it a right good wallop. Yeah. 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 And obviously, mm-hmm. Virat, that 113. Uh, you're looking pretty handy, good there, Borny. It? it was handy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ollie, uh, you went Livingston for uh, leading wicket taker. Injured. Uh, been unlucky. Yep. Yeah. And Sam Curran. Uh he's actually I think got yeah, he's doing Sorry, better on runs. Yeah. He's doing yep. better on runs than wickets. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't yep. matter. Not important. Yeah. Jeez, we're doing well. Uh, and then I went Moeen Ali, which setting the world on fire. <laughs> After and, having said Adam Zampa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even there. And then um <laughs> Rishabh Pant. He's doing okay. He's doing better than Jaswell. So um, Yes. Who are you? Who, do you want to pick them now, Binger? Who's your leading? Yeah. I mean, we're halfway through the tournament, but leading wicket taker. Yeah, I mean, and- if you if you look at who's done well, um, uh, Classen, what's he? He's in third spot at the moment with most mm-hmm. runs. He's yep. he's obviously, you know, a guy that just comes out and smacks him, and he, and he hits him with a strike rate of over one hundred and fifty. Um, Cole is on top. Sasha Dustin's on second. Reem Parag's bowling, uh, batting very well. He's in fourth position. And then, of course, Shubman Gill. I mean, if if you if you want to watch the perfect cover drive and mm. see you know see guys that can actually score runs along the ground as opposed to going aerial a lot, um, he's the guy to watch. But Coley, three hundred and sixteen runs at an average of over a hundred, he's going to be tough to beat. Yes, yeah. 
The strike, uh, the strike rate's the only thing. There's been a bit of conjecture around that the uh, strike rate with Coley. Um, so yeah, we'll wait and see how that pans out. It's a bit like, that. That's a delicate one. It's a bit like when MS dropped a catch the other day. Everyone just goes, "Look away, look no. away, don't, don't, don't comment, scratch, scratch the turf." <laughs> hey, are, we allowed, are, we, are, we allowed, are we allowed to do a little minute on India's T Twenty World Cup squad? Where, where are we heading with it? Is Virat in? Is Rohit? Obviously going to captain. Shubman Gill, where does he sit? Your man, Gilly Jaiswal, is he in? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sh- got- Shevin, Shevin Dube, big uh, left-hander from CSK. Lord Dube's got to play, Vaughn. Dube's Dube, got to play. Rink Singh, Hardik Panji, if he's not bowling, does he go? as just the batter oh. because he's not bowling for Mumbai. Look, I'm just throwing a few bombs out there, but who's in? <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea. I'll have a better opinion in two weeks' time when I've been there and digested two solid weeks of the IPL to be able to pick who I would think. So I'll park my opinion on that one for two weeks. But um, but it's spoiled for choice. So I mean, Richard Part you didn't even mention, and Vaughn, yeah. I know you are adamant that he's already actually not just booked his ticket; he's checked in already. Oh, he's going. Yeah, he's I, going, Richard. Definitely. He's got a massage. US. I've heard. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, he's on the way. Yeah. I want yeah. to see if, he him, if he's fit to be included. He's bowling rockets, 150 k's plus. He picked up a side niggle, I think it was, but hopefully he'll be okay. So I would have him mm. in the squad, whether or not he plays. He's only young. Get him in. Get him that that experience around you know the team. Um, mm. I loved uh, Ian Bishop describing him as a child of the wind. Do you? Did you consider yourself a child of the wind back in the day, Binger? Child of the wind? Well, I, I was a child that wanted to bowl with the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with a free, you know, with a free mental doc, doctor at my clacker. That was always nice. But, um, no, not Don't a child remind of me wind. of that. Don't remind me of that, Bing. Two o two three that series. <laughs> when you bowl with, <laughs> when fun. you bowl with the doctor. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just start starting to shoot her. Poor bloke who you cleaned up at the Wacker. Jesus. Tudor. Alex, Alex Tudor. Alex yeah, Alex Tudor. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Not, not well, much fun for the next grill up. Get a bit center. Sorry? Just get that grill a bit compressed. <laughs> yeah. Too wide. I mean, it's like it looked like a letterbox. <laughs> uh, that could have been like titanium and that ball was going to go through there. But next no, next batter come in literally marking center through pools of blood. Palmerston it was. Yeah, fair to say Harmy didn't stick around long. <laughs> we were yeah. on the bench yeah. in about 10 minutes. What was your technique? <laughs> to, be honest, we didn't, to be honest, we didn't want him to uh, stick around. We'd had a table booked at Cottesloe for quite a while. <laughs> oh, what was your technique when you knew you, knew you were going out to face Binger? Oh, I see, I, I've told this story many times. We walked out one evening. I think there was about 10 overs to go. And... Uh, Triscothic, my partner, hated facing McGrath and Gillespie as an opening pair. He just didn't quite get his rhythm going. No. As we walked out, he looked at me and went, oh, it's Brett Lee. And I went, what, you happy with that? He went, yeah, that's fine. And I was like, <laughs> fucking for what? Anyway, I think it was his fourth ball that you bowled him. His off stump flew out the ground, <laughs> flew, over, flew over Gilly's head, and he had to walk by me. And I went, still happy with Bingo? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> uh, that was very good. Hey, just, just one last bit on that game last night. Well, by the time this comes out two days ago, the, the sun rises. Yep. What have we got there? What's growling away? Vaughn, playing. Mrs. Mrs. Vaughn has clearly decided to start to print something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. What about that? Oh, I'm very so sorry about this. I mean, this is. Right, does she not realise that we're, I'm, I'm recording the biggest podcast in the world and she's in the kitchen with this? That's the problem with technology. That's a Bluetooth system, isn't it? Yeah, I've never used it. Yeah. Let's see, let's see what she's printing out. Let's, let's hope it's not a hundred page docu- document. Oh, the divorce papers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> shit. Cancel warning. Very good yeah, that's, that's one way of finding out, isn't it? <laughs> so, nicely. <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to say about that last over. What, 28 or so needed? Jeez, they, the fielding team gave them every chance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Drop catch. Three drop catches, <laughs> nine balls bowled. <laughs> that was crazy. Hey, I- 
I'll tell you what happened that game last night. Um, so Shikadarman got stumped off the quick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if that was me, if that was me, that oh, could... can you mute me for one minute? Just mute me. <laughs> Go Bing. Shikha Darwin got stumped off the quick. So if that yeah. was me bowling and the and the keep if Gilly Few came up, I would have gone upstairs to see if my front foot was over the line. I wouldn't have wanted him to take that as a wicket. <laughs> well, that, not having it. That, I, I, I got one off McGrath. It was stumped Craig McMillan yes. in uh, in Wellington. Yes. Remember that? And and McGrath was yeah, standing in the middle of the pitch going, no, no, going. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I was going <laughs> off. But uh, no, it was a sharp bit of work by Hendrick, wasn't it? And um, A sharp bit, bit of work of... by you as well, off Pidgey. Yeah, not not super batting from Shikha Darwin. don't know why you charge yeah. down the pitch that far that early when the keeper's up. Even at 140 right. clicks, most decent keepers Ridiculous. should click that ball. It was outside off. He was sighted all mm. the way. But it was a nice nice bit of work. Good bit of keeping. Now, um, Bing, we've kept you a while here. Um, yeah. As you've seen, oh, Vaughnie's giving me the thumbs up. Um, he's pretty happy with the divorce settlement papers by the looks of things. He's <laughs> happy with his slice. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's one issue there, though. I've, I've, I've muted him. I can't unmute him. Vaughnie, you're going to have to unmute yourself. It's only a one-way system here, <laughs> which is a good thing to know. Um, so the the microphone about, um, icon. Oh, no, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm off to Prague. I'm off to Prague in August, apparently. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Poor thing. Are you sure the second ticket for you, Vaughnie? No. <laughs> it's the, it's the name, it? <laughs> I'm there for good. <laughs> it says one room. Oh, three. One, one room. Way. One room, five nights, three adults. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Maybe so you one there or. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> That's brilliant. Looking forward to that trip. <laughs> Time to Good. spice up the marriage, eh? That's fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, Alt, did you have a point before we got – well, we had to no, get jumped the just – it was just telling um, Vaughan he's unmute himself. But yeah, quiz time. Absolutely. So, Brett, how it works is um, we uh, have a little special section quiz. Um, you, well, you heard season one, all about our guests. So this week, mm. is, of course, yourself. Um, so let's get straight into it. We've had some cracking uh, trivia rounds recently. So number one, what is higher? Is it Binger's first class runs, Vaughan's ODI runs, or Gilly's T20 runs? We've got Prof on scoring. Ooh. Binger, Binger's what? First class runs. Yeah. Vaughan's ODI or Gilly's T20. Oh, he must have paid 100. I'm going on Binger. Yeah, I'm going Binger. He'd, he'd have got a few jocks in his time. Binger, what do you reckon? Oh, I'm, I'm going to go. Well, not me. I don't know really, it's me. Ooh. Gilly. Okay. We Ooh. have... Binger's first class runs at 2,120. Vaughney's ODI, 1,982. Gilly's T20, 2,600. Oh, come on. Oh, there, Binger. Thank God for that. Good because I'm not win the batting award. Mate, <laughs> you're, counting the, you're counting the T20 innings in the backyard there for me, were you? Because I, I didn't fire too many shots. No. T20. Uh, enough that's not even including internationals um but going well, that, 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 that about 20 runs <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um speaking of um number two what is higher vaughney's t20 <laughs> runs or or binger's t20 international wickets <laughs> i'm going B- binger's wickets without any doubt warning i'm going binger mm. okay well we have 27 27- Runs for Vaughan in T20s. I reckon I got 26. You got 28. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All square. One, go. one, one, one. One, one, one. one. Number three, as I scramble to write a tiebreaker. Um, what is higher? <laughs> Billy, list A centuries, Binger's first class five wicket hauls, or Vaughan's test centuries? Oh, uh, does, does first class include Tess? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It does. 
Oh. So what was it? Your, list, your Gillies list A centuries, Binger's first class five week hauls, or Vaughan's test centuries. I know you got a heap, Gilly, and I reckon you got a heap of um, first class hundreds. I'm, I'm gonna go Vaughan. <laughs> Vaughan, Vaughan test. I'm, I'm going. I reckon Vaughan got 18 tests. So because we've had this, <laughs> we've done oh, we got, Gilly, you... I'm gonna go Vaughan. Vaughan, what are you going? Uh, I'm gonna go myself as well. Okay, we have 16 list A centuries for Gilly. <laughs> 18 test centuries of Vaughan and 20 oh, uh, uh, holes for Binger sweet. in first class cricket. 20. Wow. No I chance. Have, wouldn't have picked picked that. One on debut in test matches, I believe. Never got a six for though. Gassed it. No. Mm. Never got a six for. Lots um, of fives. Yeah. One, one, one. Yeah. There's, no column. There's no column in the stats for sixes. No, no, there's four. <laughs> nah, four for them. Very true, Gilly. <laughs> Wasted wicket. Uh, number yeah. four. What is higher, Binger's ODI batting strike rate or Gilly's <laughs> test batting strike rate? Oh. I would have been slow to the death, but I wouldn't have got that many. Uh, my I'm test going Binger. Binger. Right. I'm going Binger. Come on, he's gone Binger. It's been my, my test batting strike rate's been the, uh, the butt of jokes already on this podcast. Yeah. Isn't it? When our friend from the two <laughs> grade cricketer sledged the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go Gilly. I'm going Binga. Binga. Okay. Binga. We have Gilly at 81.95, according to Sam, not good enough. Yeah. Um, and 83.58, Binga. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, so, me. I'm learning all these new things today, gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> so, two, two, one. I believe our guest is behind. Exactly right. Ah. And um, the fifth question. Uh, so ideally, we get a bit of a different answer from Vaughn and Gilly. Is what is higher, Vaughn's Test batting strike rate, right? Gilly's T20 international highest score, or <laughs> Binger's Test bowling strike rate? Right? So Vaughn's uh, Test batting higher. Yeah, Vaughny, your test batting strike rate, Gillies T20 international highest score, or Binger's test bowling strike rate? Oh, mm. I'm going to go Vaughny. Vaughny's batting. I'll, I'll go Gilly. Okay, and Binger. I'm going to go my strike rate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Gillies T20 international score. Was forty eight. Yeah. <laughs> Vaughan's test batting strike rate was fifty one point one three. Yes. Binger's test bowling strike rate was fifty two point nine, which means we have got two two two. Yeah, we're all oh. square. We've got a tie break, which I have it's a got. Super over. It's a super yeah. over. And it's um it's 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 a classic super over. I like doing it. It's nearest wins, unless you're bang on. Okay. On Crick Info, how many Clubs, countries, what are, are attributed to Brett Lee on Crick Info. How many different sides did he play for? Hmm. Thirteen. Thirteen. I'll go. Uh, yeah, I'll go. No, I'm going to go low. I'm going to go ten. He's counting Gosh, up. His head. I'm, I'm trying to count him out. Something. Um. Are we including the? Are we including the more most recently announced Australian? We're not no champions of <laughs> no. legends. No. So, are you including? Are, are you saying Australia and New South Wales? Uh, I can't possibly comment, but <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. say Australia's one team, New South Wales another team. I don't know um, that Mossman Wales get about, a um, I want to go about eight. It's eight on the know, dot. It's eight. Oh, on solid, well, Luke. What? Mate. what an ending. So yeah, I've actually never played true. overseas as a pro. Um, I played for the Wellington Firebirds in the yep. Central Otago in NZ. Yep. That was a good story as well. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Can you elaborate? <laughs> no, well, they, uh, I, I just said I, don't, I, I didn't want any money. I just played for wine, which was cool. Oh. <laughs> Outstanding. Should have played for tequila. 
Ah, oh, yes, now we're talking. Nice segue. Nice, nice segue. <laughs> Which brings us to all that's left, Gilly. Yeah. Yes, indeed. How's it going, yeah, you, Gilly? You mentioned tequila. Uh, yeah, no, nah, it's good. It. There's, there's, um, there's uh, machinations are in, in motion, mate. There's um, plenty going on. When do I get and, to try uh, it? Well, <laughs> when, after us, <laughs> when we develop it. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, there's still still uh, a, a strong desire for the um, for the Club Prairie Fire tequila. So, uh, and with that in mind, it'd be uh, inappropriate to to not do a little toast. Um, wonderful to have you on, mate. And as I said, right from the start. Uh, 30 years in India, 130 million Benjamin Franklins and uh, still the absolute quality, down-to-earth, humble bloke that you've always been, mate. Thanks for coming on. Cheers to you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, absolute pleasure. Yes, you? Um, Beautiful. Just a reminder, you can find us at Club Prairie Fire on all socials and YouTube. Um, like, subscribe, follow, do what you got to do. Yes, Gilly? I uh, just forgot, remiss me to thank you. I finally caught up to Vaughn the boys at Cluj, they sent it out. They sent the top out. Um, got the name and number on the back and everything. So uh, cool. well done. Well done. So, I'm guessing ours are in the post, um, Prof. There's one more thing. Speaking of the socials <laughs> at, at Club Prairie Fire, Gilly, everyone wants to know, over 100 comments, did MS Tony reply to your text? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, negative. <laughs> um, I, can, I can confirm. <laughs> I did get a new number who New phone, who dis? Um, <laughs> I did get a reply yeah. from Sachin, um, but that's negative as well. <laughs> so there's two we can strike off the list. Um, I'm going to go on a. I'm going to go and manhandle a few people when I get to Mumbai and really cut to the chase. But there's some positive leads of other talent that were mentioned. Absolutely great okay. stuff. Perfect. So Virat, fantastic. All right, <laughs> we'll leave it there, gents. Thanks very much, Binger. Good on you, talk. Good good you guys, good on you. A lot so, of fun. We enjoyed it. See you Bye in a few. Well, remarkably, you've watched the show. Thank you. That's all I can say. And if you really like it, press something. I don't know something on the screen. Press it uh, or subscribe. That'd be really handy. It'd be really nice. Thank you.